Ladies and gentlemen, it's been one year since the collapse of the supervillain Blair Zon. And Illuminati has finally ran for the hills and left everything behind, including her channel. And if you ask me, there's no way she can come back from this. But that's it, ladies and gentlemen, she's vanished from the face of the earth. I mean, she's probably in some mountaintop somewhere, hiding in an evil lair, harvesting the energy from the earth's core. With a name like Blair Zon, you wouldn't expect anything less. But if you don't know the current events, she's basically trying to file a lawsuit against Wonderstruck, Aussie Media, and Felix the Kit Kat. And these people are actually past employees of Blair, and she's probably just trying to sue them for money and control. Two things the supervillains love the most, of course. And I feel like I wanted to make this video as almost like a documentary style, but outlining everything that's happened, but all into one video. So it's gonna be like kind of like an old Curtis Price video. Whee! If you recall, all of this drama erupted when she targeted a creator known as Legal Eagle for allegedly stealing her editing style, which turned out to be a basic highlight effect. Which may I remind everyone is a basic editing technique which has been around way before Blair's YouTube days. Not only were her claims baseless, but her approach lacked any semblance of respect. It almost seemed like her sole enjoyment stemmed from bullying others. However, ladies and gentlemen, it was her ill-advised attempt to flex her power by calling out Legal Eagle, which ultimately sealed the fate of her career. This simple, pitiful move exposed her as someone who steals content, a liar, a hypocrite, a manipulator, egotistical, and a downright bully. And I do believe, ladies and gentlemen, that this is a cautionary tale of how arrogance can lead to the demise of someone's career. Shortly after the drama with Legal Eagle, a past friend of Blair's known as The Click came forward on Twitter to discuss her past behaviour during the Sad Milk era, exposed her for lashing out at friends and fans, as well as displaying poor anger management. The Click outlined an example such as screaming at him for half an hour for an array of random things, as well calling him a bad friend. It's intriguing, Blair, that you would label The Click as a bad friend. Considering you were the one lashing out like a spoiled 14 year old girl. Eventually, ladies and gentlemen, the clique and other members left the Sad Milk group, prompting speculation about whether Blair was the reason for their departure. And as scrutiny intensified, Blair's behaviour became out of control. Over the following months, you resorted to spreading lies and misinformation about the group to paint yourself as the victim. And why did she do that, ladies and gentlemen? Well, it's because she's a narcissist. She's terrified of losing power. She has a desperate need to be liked and to be seen as the victim. And that's when, ladies and gentlemen, her desperation became evident. The almighty Blair Zon tried to dig up old videos of the click dating back 11 to 14 years ago. And in the end, you transformed into that one high school bully that everyone knows and hates. Leveraging your popularity and using your friend group to intimidate others. As Click had only recently started his own channel, Blair appeared quite intimidating to him. Boasting about her connections and powerful friends. Causing the click to feel silenced and constantly looking over his shoulder for the next year. But the matters only took a darker turn from there. Now this next bit is gonna loop back later on in the video. You know I love my loop backs, all right? But she offered a past employee of hers $200 to sit there looking through raw milk, raw milk? To look through countless videos of Sad Milk's raw audio just to find a clip of the click saying the arsler. But this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the blatant hypocrisy cannot be overlooked. Mm. Her past employee had claimed that Blair herself uses the arsler in private. So you're there paying somebody $200 to try and dig up dirt on the click saying the arsler, yet you yourself use the arsler. <laughs> Double standards much? And also $200 just to look through some raw footage. Is any uh, jobs opening up at your company? Because I'd be surely interested. <laughs> However, ladies and gentlemen, it didn't stop there. Ooh, the real Blair Zone. <laughs> At this point, ladies and gentlemen, many of us started to speculate the true identity behind the Illuminati channel. The question was, ladies and gentlemen, who was the woman behind the mask? I mean, yeah, it was probably some ugly c***, but, but also, it was someone who relishes in using their power to silence others. While she may have presented herself one way online, whether as someone civil or even as an AI-generated character, the reality was far from it. I appreciate your patience and understanding during this challenging time. I am dedicated to upholding my channel's values and delivering on our commitments. I am confident that the truth will prevail. Sincerely. Blair on. Of course, she may appear as a calm and collective individual, and also somebody who may have secret plans to take over the entire world. I mean, I am dedicated to delivering on our commitments, and also the truth will prevail. Do you reckon she's one of the Daleks from Doctor Who? Now the Daleks are the masters of Earth. As follows a tweet from Aussie Media, Sir Illuminati has officially sent me a cease and desist. 
Best part is she cites parts of my videos which I had no part in and demands I make a public apology. And then it happened again. Roughly a month had passed without an update on the situation. That was until three days ago when I received a cease and desist letter demanding that legal action would be taken against me if I did not remove my response on Twitter threads. As we can see, she appears to be someone who resorts to lawsuits in an attempt to silence others, contradicting the fair and responsible persona she projects online. And you can tell she was getting desperate and paranoid because she sent a cease and desist letter to Wonderstruck. The guy hadn't even uploaded a YouTube video yet. So, and I think I'm really highlighting the pattern here of her like using cease and desist letters or, or like lawsuits to try and silence people. Rather than engaging in a fair and constructive conversation, she just uses legal conversations <laughs> to silence people. Like she's trying to play this victim online as if she's like a fair person, but then behind closed doors, she's having a board meeting with all the lawyers. And they just keep coming. Could just be me, but sending a cease and desist to the one person who is yet to release a video is highly suspicious. We won't be silenced. Now we might be thinking to ourselves, hang on a second now, maybe she's panicking, maybe she's just like never dealt with controversy before, she's never been called out before, so maybe it's just like a moment of panic and she's just throwing cease and desist layers at everybody. Well, unfortunately for Blair's on, ladies and gentlemen, she wasn't the only one doing the digging. A video resurfaced from Blair's ex-boyfriend providing evidence that her behaviour wasn't just a momentary panic, but a long-standing pattern of attempting to silence those who challenged her character. In the video, her ex-boyfriend claimed that she had previously tried to dox him threatened his channel, and even threatened him with a lawsuit. God, really? That doesn't sound like my sweetheart Blair. She wouldn't do things like that, would she? Well, <laughs> let's find out. I mean, this revelation just further underlines Blair's willingness to go to extreme lengths to maintain her public image. Regardless of what it might do to others, you know, she just doesn't give a crap. She only cares about herself. Narcissist. And he went on to reveal that he had recorded a conversation that he had with Blair and it actually showed a lot what she was like behind closed doors. Then I asked you a simple yes or no question. Were you talking ill of me to other content creators? I even said I didn't think you were. It was just... The answer was no. no I don't understand. But now it's good. dodged it. Now it might change to a yes because now I'm going to have to protect my ass. Because you want to come at me sideways. And you know, I do just want to say that it is fun, kind of funny that you accused me of wanting to do it for money and that I didn't really like the content and then here you are saying that you're bored and trapped by the content you make. I just... It's I, about the boredom. I'm, you hat. Look, Blair, I'm not saying that I was angry about the breakup, okay? I'm not. I think that it was good for both of us. What I'm saying is that I was angry about the fact that you were the one who proposed a collaboration, and then as soon as I was ready and put all this effort into it, you just kind of shut me down. And in one night, you just went through so many insecurities and told me streaming wasn't going to work, and then in the same night, also shut down the collaboration, which was something that was supposed to help us both. It just seemed... So it had nothing to do with the fact that I go, oh, I'm moving, I'm busy, I'm doing shit every single day. The only thing you had to ask me is, when are we collabing? When are we collabing? When are we collabing? And it's like, oh, you're treating me like a fan, Blair. And I'm like, well, perhaps, Josh, you should have stopped acting like one. Prior to this, he had informed Blair that a doctor was threatening to release his private information. Initially, she claimed she would release a video defending her boyfriend. Aw, that's really nice of you, Blair, but oh no. In a stunning act of portrayal, ladies and gentlemen, she went back on this promise and instead sided with the doxa. This idiotic and selfish move involved exchanging personal information about her boyfriend. Keeping in mind though, this guy was a doxa, you know, a very dangerous and unhinged individual. And we have a lot of experience with doxers on this channel, as you know, Lily Jean. Got my own personal experience. Quite proud of it, actually. And I feel like this just further reveals how far she was willing to go to protect her image. And if it couldn't get any worse than this, it just did. After attempting to file numerous lawsuits to silence the ones exposing her, rumours surfaced that Blair was being sued herself. For tax evasion. For a town of 26 grand. Although this fee of 26k shouldn't be a problem for Blair, given the fact that she was actually pulling in some decent views before the drama started, she, she, she was not poor. Put it that way, she, she had a lot of money. It just further adds on to it once again, is not everything is as it seems. <laughs> According to Aussie Media, Blair's lifestyle was marked as excessive spending. He said, that there was like 10 Amazon packages arriving on a daily basis to the point where their whole house was just made up of cardboard boxes. Empty cardboard boxes. Why are you so fucking lazy for? All you gotta do is just break the boxes down and just put them in the recycling. Can't be that hard, surely. And there's nothing wrong with spending money, but when you get to the point where you're not even paying your editors any paychecks, 
that's got to raise some red flags right there. During this time, Aussie Media and Wonderstruck reported that they barely received any paychecks, as Blair would deduct their earnings as rent payments instead of compensating them for their work. I think this behaviour, to be honest, just underscores her lack of impulse control and irresponsibility. It also suggests why she might be so desperate to sue those exposing her. Her financial situation has just become an increasingly strained at this point. And I truly believe that her ongoing legal battles with Wonderstruck, Aussie Media and Felix the Kit Kat is not so much about revealing the truth, but more of just to extract money and power. Lawyer approved tweet. I am currently being sued by Blair, as known as the Illuminati, as well as her company, Pyramid Entertainment Group LLC for defamation. This lawsuit was filed one week after Blair had pushed me into foreclosure proceedings in August and has been something I've needed to fight behind the scenes alongside the foreclosure. More info to come. And at this point, I think we're just all thinking to ourselves like, Illuminati just, just doesn't want to stop, does she? She's just obsessed with just gaining power and just having an edge over everybody. But as I mentioned already, the lawsuit was filed against Aussie Media and Wonderstruck, the two YouTubers. And despite them being like the main focal point of the lawsuit, she also involved Felix the Kit Kat, which only has a Twitter account. And Felix the Kit Kat's response to him being sued by Illuminati was just confusion. He responded a motion to dismiss claim for a breach of contract against him in the Second Amendment complaint. And I truly believe that involving Felix the Kit Kat was definitely an act of paranoia as well as lashing out. And the reason she filed the lawsuit against him was because he released some DMs involving him and her. And we're going to check those out in a little bit. And him releasing those screenshots was like somehow a breach of contract, I guess. And his lawyers responded to the original claim by Felix the Kit Kat acknowledging that he had released the screenshots and he also may have caused some damage to Blair's image. Keep it in mind, of course, there has been several things released by other people which has damaged Blair's image. And for her to target him makes you wonder if she's just targeting someone without a platform to retaliate in order to make some quick money, despite the fact that Felix, the Kit Kat, doing any real damage to Blair's image. And her previous response to a motion to dismiss says otherwise, as she claims his false allegations have severely impacted her reputation in the YouTube community, as well as her being a well-respected a documentarian, a well-respected documentarian who steals other people's content and gets their information from Wikipedia. And here's Felix's lawyers outlining everything. Felix does not dispute that he disclosed a private work conversation. He did. Felix does not dispute that his disclosure caused Miss Zon damage. It did. And Blair's lawyer's response to Felix's is that he breached the confidentiality agreement, which prohibited him from using any confidential information or proprietary data for anyone else's benefit. However, as we are about to witness, the screenshots released hardly seemed worth filing a lawsuit over. And all this comes full circle to our previous discussion. The individual Blair was contacting via Discord to get information on the click was indeed Felix the Kit Kat. However, allegedly at the time of these communications happening in Discord, Felix wasn't even an official employee of Blair's. It's believed that the exchange occurred before any NDA agreement was in place, potentially rendering this entire lawsuit invalid. Now, I'm sure you guys can relate to what I'm about to say, but maybe in a different way, but sometimes my friends will message me and be like, yo, can you make me a thumbnail? I'll send you $20. Or can you edit this video for me? I'll, I'll send you $250. You know, it, it's what mates do. Like a mate will message me and just ask me for a favor. Almost from looking at these Discord messages, it does seem like as if Blair was just asking him for a favor. It doesn't seem like that he was actually employed by her at the time. In fact, Felix's lawyers stated that this was not a breach of contract claim as this was before Felix's official employment. But in hindsight, Blair's intentions of suing Felix the Kit Kat still remains a little bit unclear. I mean, we all know you're desperate for money, Blair. Didn't you have, like, your car repossessed and you also have debt collectors after you? <laughs> oh. And as we can see here, claim one, breach of the confidentiality agreement. The confidentiality agreement prohibits, I'm guessing that's Felix, from using confidential information or proprietary data for the benefit of any other person, corporation, or entity other than Pyramid during the term of employee's employment with Pyramid, or any time thereafter. Well, as I was just saying, that was before he was employed, so it wasn't thereafter, and it wasn't during, it was before. And also, if it is a breach of confidentiality, how on earth would him sharing those screenshots benefit your company in any way? Like him releasing those Discord screenshots is not going to benefit any other person. It, 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 it's just him like just coming on the internet and just being like, look guys, Blair's a cunt. Bringing it up to the current events though, Blair hasn't posted on her YouTube channel in three months and she's still losing tens and thousands of subscribers a month. She also has a second channel, by the way. It's called The Prism of the Past, where she has a mere 1,000 subscribers. Ooh, got an army building there. 
Fucking hell. Ronsi is very unlikely she's going to make a comeback given everything that's transpired over the last couple of years. She's just virtually absent from the internet. She's just gone. And hopefully it remains that way. And I know this video was a little bit different. Usually I'm a silly sausage in my videos. Okay, this is more documentary style. With that said, check out my other videos when I'm a silly sausage. In this video, I talk about a guy who's pheromone maxing. He don't shower at all. And in this one, I'm talking about uh, Belle Delphine.